Let's take a look at one of the most powerful features for animation in Lightwave. It's the dope sheet. Now I, I refer to the dope sheet as the dope tracks older brother. Uh, it's a lot more powerful and allows you to um, see and edit all the items, uh, channels, all the keyframes uh, in the entire scene. So let's head over to the scene editor. Okay, and I'm just gonna go full screen. I've loaded up this scene that Johnny Gordon put together because it's got a lot going on, a lot of animation, a lot of keyframes, a lot of items. Okay, and I'm just gonna slide this over to the side by clicking this little bar and dragging. Okay. Now, one thing that you're going to want to do is watch the video uh, that talks about the items tab and how to uh, manipulate and edit this. I'm going to uh, kind of skim over that as I work and focus just on the dope sheet. But we've got a uh, there's a video on the items tab uh, that you'll want to to take a look at. Okay, so the dope sheet uh, gives you an overview of your of all the channels in your scene. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop to to list view here and um, so we can see all of our items and let's pick uh, let's pick an area to work with if I want to um, zoom in I'm just going to if I want to zoom out I'm just gonna pull this bar and I can slide across and see my scene and notice these little blocks get smaller if I want to zoom in I'm just going to stretch that even smaller and each block becomes bigger each one of those blocks is a keyframe it's a little bit easier to see than the little sliver on the dope track or the the timeline and that's why a lot of artists prefer working with the dope sheet because it's just easier to see the the individual keyframes okay so what I'm gonna do is um, select the uh, Aborigine in the scene and I'm gonna hide everything else and then I'm gonna drop down let's see let's um, unhide I'm gonna drop down the Aborigine and grab all of his bones and then hide everything else okay so we're gonna work with uh, this for starters okay so now that I have all of uh, this open let's um, zoom out so we can see more keyframes and I can start working with individual areas I can set the um, the time that I'm looking for here 0 to 851 well I can change that just by typing in just like doing in the timeline okay we've got our our frames running across the top here that are numbered so that we know that if we um, if we come here we're on uh, 67 okay and each one in this left column is the actual items Okay, so if I wanted to select all the keyframes for, say, um, finger 01A left, I just have to click right here. If I want to grab all of these, I'll shift click, and I've grabbed all the keyframes. It, it stops me from having to uh, draw a bounding box select mode because I can just click the whole thing. If I want to grab every item's keyframes in this frame, I can just click here. If I want to get a range of frames, I can shift click, and I can grab here, and that's what will be selected. Okay, there's this little handle up here, and if I go all the way over here, there's this little handle here, okay, and I can change this, and this is my render range, okay, so by changing this, let me go over to render, render globals, and now it's from frame 58 to 748, and I'm just going to move this, say, to here and now it's from 20 to 748 so you don't have to have to open up the render globals panel and change the render range here uh, you can do it right here in the dope sheet which is a pretty handy item uh, so if you're wondering what these little flags are all about it's our render range okay so now we have a, a basic idea of how we can move around I can I can just select items and all their keyframes I can select multiple frames um, with all the items keyframes in those frames I can also say well I just want to work with this area and I'm just left clicking and dragging over the area that I want to select okay? and I'm selecting all of these frames okay? now if nothing is selected and I and I right click I can um, move the time uh, here so I'm moving the the slider here um, I can uh, select everything okay I'm gonna unselect all I can view all okay which crunches everything down so that I can I can see it um, I can also select an area and I can zoom to selection 
so that I can quickly get to where I want. I don't have to worry about coming down here. So if I want, I can grab this area and zoom to selection. I'm going to view all, then come over to this area, and I'm going to zoom to selection. Okay. So you'll want to take advantage of the um, of the right click menu. I've got edit and graph editor, so I can launch the graph editor. I can do a numeric offset. So if I come here, I can type in numerically how I want to offset these keys. I can numerically time scale. If I want to do it interactively, I can just grab this handle and squeeze it in. Okay. If I want to offset interactively, I just click and drag and I'm offsetting those keys. Okay. If I erase, erase is different than delete, and we'll want to know the difference between erase and delete. If I were to delete these keys, everything would shift. This range of frames would would shift the, everything that follows it would then get shifted this number of frames. And I could, by doing that, I could delete all the work that I set up on my animation. So I rarely use delete when I'm in the um, dope sheet. What I usually use is erase because erase will remove those keyframes, but notice nothing else shifted. Let's come over here and delete. Notice these keys just shifted. I've just destroyed my timing in other areas of, of the scene. And uh, I don't think Johnny's going to be too happy with this because he had a, a really nice animation here and I just destroyed it. But let's, um, let's go forward. So I can, uh, of course, uh, cut, copy, right? So I can cut and copy uh, keys as well. So I can paste them later. Uh, I can zoom to selection. Quantize, if you had fractional keyframes uh, and you, select, you can select an area and quantize, and what it does is it snaps to the nearest keyframe. So it's a good way to, to fix your, um, your fractional keyframes, okay? So again, I can just select an area. I can change the timing. This is going to speed things up. This is going to slow things down. I can shift to new areas. Okay. If uh, if I want, I can um, go. Let me uh, let me view all. Okay. I'm going to take just squeeze them in a little bit, and then I'm going to offset it so that this is still lining up there. Okay. So that's just a quick look at navigating through the dope sheet. Again, it's a really fast way of working with your um, working with all the items in the scene and all the channels. Don't forget you can come over to the channels tab and even go and pick up uh, light intensity and things like that. So if we were to go over to let's go um, over to the gun, okay, and I'm going to zoom in drop down the channels, come over to, say, oh, the gun flash. Let's go over to the gun flash and go over to intensity. We're able to go and um, adjust the intensity. Instead of going to the graph editor, we can do it right here. So we can see keys that we normally don't see on, say, the timeline or the dope track. Um, here is an example. Let me uh, zoom into to here. So zoom to selection. These little black tick marks, now they're at the, the top, but you could actually get them in the center. It would be representing a fractional keyframe. And you can go and adjust the, uh, you can use quantize to get rid of the fractional keyframe if it was, say, sitting in the center of a particular keyframe. So again, that's just a quick look at the, uh, at the dope sheet. And, uh, and it's a really powerful tool for uh, managing and editing your keyframes.